Let's get to our guest, please. So, kick out the jams, kick up soul, pour another glass of that rock and roll, turn up the band, find the whole gonna lose control tonight. What do you want from me? I'm not a Mary the sweet heart. Back up, you creeps. Get away from me. All right, uh, Annie Fry has uh, joined us in the studio here. Annie, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you. I, this, um... Government shut down. All this stuff is just. I, I had Jared Halpert on from Fox News Radio earlier, and my point to him was, wh- why are the Republicans fighting over whether or not to offer a continuing resolution? Why don't they just pass a budget in the House, mm-hmm. send it to the Senate, where the Democrats will refuse to give them the sixty votes they need, and just hang it around their neck? Put the action on the Democrats. Thank just you. Do it, and then let the Democrats have their opportunity to be the responsible party for shutting it give down. Give them just yeah. enough rope to hang themselves. Mm-hmm. Am I allowed to say that, or am I racist for saying that? Um, you pro- probably I'm just both. saying, just give them enough rope to hang themselves. Yeah. That, that's all. That's yeah. all. Thank you. That's we know how that goes these days. Yeah. We do. Um, the, the 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 governor dust up is not over. Last week, it was a week ago Tuesday night is when the governor gave his state of the state speech. This all broke that evening. We talked about it last week. Everybody kept saying, "Well, wait a minute, because there's more coming." I think that the accuser, the the ex husband, um, his attorney Al Watkins is um, gifted when it comes to stirring the hornet's nest. So he's fed out to the media yesterday that they've released additional tapes mm-hmm. to police. And the interesting thing that I find about that is that it's un it's unlikely that the TV station who produced that piece, wouldn't have said, we're only going to do this if we get the best audio. So I'm wondering what else he could possibly have. I don't think he has anything. I think he's bluffing to keep this story in the news and to keep pressure on on the governor. And, And lo and behold, as Republicans are prone to do, four or five of them have already come out and called for his resignation. You have yeah. thoughts on it? Yeah. Um, I think it's sad. I think that you keep it, you as in me, I guess I keep pivoting to find the path out of this story, this scandal. And everywhere you pivot, it's just sad. And you know, you have, you have a, um, an admitted consensual affair. It seems as though both sides of that, uh, the, both families involved in that have dealt with it in different ways. This didn't. This didn't um, open up information to one of the parties that was directly affected by it. It wasn't during the election, but it's still really sad. It's sad for the kids involved. It's sad for the the marriage that was broken up. It's sad for the marriage that's still together. That you know, once that happens, it's part of your history. It's it's still sad. Now what we have is the. In my opinion, it's it's the political vultures that want to swoop in and politicize it on both sides of this issue. The question that I have is, where does this become the people of Missouri's business? And how does this affect Governor Greitens ability to do his job? And I'm not sure that I have enough information at this point in the game to say that his his job is is going to be affected, his ability to act on behalf of the people who elected him. Now, I'll also add to that, if he wants to run for re-election at the end of, of this term, it might sway some people's opinion about him. They're built, if they voted for him before, it might sway their opinion to vote for him again. But I don't see what's on the table right now that makes me think he needs to step down, he needs to move away from his office, because there isn't enough information out there to tell me that that is the case. I th- the voters have spoken at this point. Unless more comes down, I don't see what the grounds would be for him to resign. And I say that because I look at, you know, I'm try- I was trying to think uh, this morning of a similar situation involving a governor. And maybe, there- maybe there's been one. But the most recent one I could think of was the governor of South Carolina um, before Nikki Haley was found to be having an affair while he was governor and then using state resources to travel on the weekends to visit this individual, um, that was a clear violation of the public's trust. But he was in office when it happened. So unless more comes rolling down the hill, I don't see the grounds at this point for Eric Greitens to give up his seat. I I just don't. We've got a sitting uh, Missouri state senator who, who endorsed 
um, the assassination of, of a president of the United States, and she's still in office. This is what I thought was interesting. Yesterday, um, uh, Marsha Hafner called into the show, and she's released a statement regarding the fact that she thinks Governor Greitens is no longer fit to hold Missouri's highest office. And while she said she found no pleasure in saying this, at the bottom she also said that Governor Greitens has attacked good people to elevate his status while taking credit for the work of others. <laughs> and, every and politician. Uh, well, that, that, that's true, but it makes me think that th- there's, there are some people in the state house who have an axe to grind with this governor. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it was suggested to me yesterday that, like any good investigative journalist, you should follow the money on this. And that there are forces in the state worried about tax reform, which the governor just announced at his State of the State address. We don't have a lot of details on it, but I'm told that part of what it includes is is modifying the state tax credit program, which would cost, that would take millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars out of the pockets of developers in this state mm-hmm. um, to the tune of like 750 million dollars that would otherwise be in the budget for them to spend on other things and that's one of the things the governor is looking at 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 modifying and and that doesn't mean he's going to get it done but it's what he's going to call for and that's going to gore the ox of a lot of very powerful people in the state of missouri and and i just have to wonder with no more evidence coming forward how in the world they think there's enough now to call for his resignation. I don't see it happening. But, well, you know, the the absence of a fully painted picture is pushing us into the place where we feel like we have to color in the spots that haven't been colored in yet. There are a lot of questions that exist. And, you know, I think I think it's a healthy thing for, for us in the media to keep our eye on it, to watch what happens in the coming days, to see if there is more information that is revealed, or to see if... You know what? You have all the information. This is the extent of this. There was an extramarital affair. It broke up one marriage. It hurt another. There are children involved. This is some. This is this is something that Governor Greitens admitted to participating in, and now you know this about him. And he said he said one thing about having a certain element of character that maybe wasn't as true, which which could happen. Really, like let's let's all dump all of our skeletons out of our closet. The thing of it is, is that I think it's very important for Missourians to take a really deep breath, count to ten, and watch and see what happens. Because what we're seeing in the national media right now, what we're seeing with Donald Trump, we see this end that all these liberals are are running in hot pursuit to to discredit and eliminate this president from from the office of of the highest office in the land. That's what they want. How do we get there? We don't care. We will try every opportunity <laughs> to do yeah. it. Yeah. And and there he's been attacked. President Trump has been attacked from so many different angles, and it's not sticking. And 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 the more that you sit and you wait for things to flush out, and you pay attention, it doesn't mean take your eye off the ball, but don't swing at a ball. You know, you have to keep your eye on the ball. And you and and I don't think we've gotten the pitch to take the good swing at yet. Governor Greitens has certainly hurt his image. Because yeah. I've had him here in this studio before, and he ran on a campaign of, uh, you know, being a good family man mm-hmm. and, you know, honor and respect and, and the, the Navy SEAL thing all the time. Uh, that, that's, that doesn't jibe with what we know about what happened mm-hmm. within his marriage. But again, it didn't happen when he was on the public dime. So... You know, um, I think I think it's going to have to take another another shoe's going to have to drop. Yeah, and I think I think that it's valuable information for the voter. I don't think that it's. Um, I, I I don't necessarily want to know every single personal misstep that every politician has made before they're elected because everybody makes a mistake now and again. There's a, a varying degree of what those mistakes are, but you know, don't don't hijack this idea of conservative moral don't don't lay it on too thick and then know that this is potentially something that can come out because you know this is on him he made a really bad decision right no, and, I agree. And, and it doesn't have anything to do with Republicans or conservatism or as many are saying being a Christian like th- there is a lot of attack that comes from the left when a Republican makes a mistake. It doesn't really matter what it is. It's like, oh, they're all high and mighty. And look, they're human, just like the rest of us. Um, you know, Governor Greitens has to own this. This is this is part of his history. He's he's reaping what he's sown here. But that doesn't automatically mean that 
he's done and he's out because you know what's what's the next guy got? You know, I'm, I don't I'm know. with you. I, it, you know, some Democrats can go out and crawl on board a boat called Monkey Business when they're running for president. Yeah. Do you remember that? No. You're probably really little when that happened. But <laughs> Gary Hart challenged the media to catch him doing something wrong because there were allegations of affairs. So some reporters started following him, and he goes with his girlfriend and gets on board a boat called the Monkey Business. <laughs> Kind of ended his political career. And I thought things right just there. got weird in 2016. <laughs> no, was wrong. things have been weird a long time. You know, this week, maybe today, is the 20 year anniversary of when the Drudge Report mm-hmm. broke yeah, yeah. the Monica Lewinsky story. Made the Drudge Report. It, yeah, yeah. It may have made the Drudge Report. And L- he, lucky he's got you. all. Lucky Matt Drudge. <laughs> he's, he's got all kinds of stories on there mm-hmm. about. Um, uh, about through the years, Monica Lewinsky has shifted her blame. About 10 years after the incident, she did her first interview where she was angry with Bill Clinton because his book had come out and she didn't feel like he'd taken enough responsibility mm-hmm. for what happened. Talk about hashtag me too. There you go. <laughs> the most recent interview she did, she blamed it on Drudge yeah. can for I add, ruining her life. Can I add two things to that real Please. quick? It was the Monica Lewinsky scandal, was it? It wasn't it the was, Bill Clinton scandal. It was, it was the Monica that, Lewinsky that, that scandal. That is pre-Me Too. But I also wanted to say something real quick. I don't know if you've covered this today, but President Trump, this is important, near to dear to my heart. The March for Life is Friday. Uh-huh. He's going to address the March for Life in Washington, D.C. via satellite. He's the first president to ever do that. I did not think that President Trump was going to be a conservative president. I expected him to be a populist president and infinitely better than Hillary. Uh, this... This is unprecedented, and this is this. If if you're a pro-life advocate, which I hope we can all be, um, this is a pretty amazing thing. That is awesome. I, I didn't know. That. I think maybe Vice President Pence. He spoke at it spoke last year, last mm-hmm. year, didn't he? Yeah. Yep. Good. Good for him. Something about this administration. No kidding. It's pretty. It's exciting. true. Annie Fry, thank you. Thank you. Always a pleasure to see you. The Annie Fry Show Saturdays from five to seven, right here on FM News Talk at ninety-seven one. Whatever you do, don't miss it. It's must must listen to. Um, Radio. Back up, you creep. Get away from me. All right. 314 969 9797